Okay, now this is another setup um, that lets us warp um, to the South Clockton Owl, but we will, when we soar to that owl, we will wrong warp. Um, this time it's an observatory, which is much more convenient than doing some uh, stupid chain warp to range and a Goron Shrine. But the disadvantage is um, that the warp is only going to be based on the last byte of Z position, and then the following byte. Um, is some byte that we don't have control over, which is always a zero, and so the f uh, the last byte of z will determine the scene, and uh, the following byte, which is always zero, is the entrance. So we can only sort to entrance zero with this. Uh, yeah. So the setup starts here onto this corner. Um, the last byte of x can either be f2 or f1. It doesn't matter for this. Do a one frame side up right. Do one roll, turn, and um, then here make sure that you hold long enough right and then do a step, like do, do a full right um, step. Uh, yeah, put away sword, do one roll, then do five target slashes, then one shield slash. And three normal slashes. Okay, now put away sword and five rolls up the stairs. And turn. Um, yeah, now quick draw sword and do four jump slashes. Okay, now turn this way. Um, now we just need to adjust the. Um, Z position a little bit, and by, uh, that we do that by walking forwards for two frames three times. So one, two, one, two, the one, two, and now this Z position that we have is already our final Z position. If you don't have this Z position in the end, um, you did something wrong. Like it will still change during the setup a little bit, but we will always change it back. So now turn uh, this way, put on Zora, and do three Zora jump slashes while targeting. Don't let go of target. Now while still targeting, um, do three normal um, slashes, three single slashes. And you can see uh, see the Z position changed, but it's going to change back. We turn and do three slashes again, and now the Z position is the same again, but the X position is adjusted. Now we put on Goron, um, and now we do curls. So like we we only curl. You can demonstrate this real quick. Like if you only curl, um, Goron will already roll down, and by that we can adjust the X position. Um, so we need to <coughs> to curl um, first for 56 frames, then for, by um, for uh, for 10 frames, and then 35. So target and uh, so 56 that goes to 427 F A. Uh, I'm too far, am I? Yeah, didn't pay attention. Four two seven seven A seven oh seven F. A. Yeah, this is right. So up to here. So that's the fifty six curl. Then let go of A. That's the right position. And now, yeah, now ten frames and thirty five frames. You can switch those if you like. But um, always the 56 frames must always come first, or else you will end up with a very slightly different position in the end, like by some units. So I, s I do 10 frames now. So like that. And now 35 frames up to 4 to a 0 something.
yeah, up to this. Let go of A. And this is what we want, yes. Um, now turn. Put on Zora again. And we need to... Um, yeah, do... Oh yeah, um, so if you see the, um, the exposition, the last digit is E. And there's a technique with which you can just adjust this by one unit at a time. And this is just one target slash back and forth. And now this is 7D. Now we do this one more time. And now it's 7C. Um, this doesn't always work uh, like this. It very much depends on... Yeah, floats are just a little bit more complicated. Yeah, it depends on where exactly you stand in the room. If it changes by one unit or not at all, or by several units. But right here, this is very convenient. So we have adjusted that. Um, now turn uh, become human. Actually, I didn't need uh, I didn't need to turn. So when I slash back, we have this position as human. After the um, fourth Zora slash, um, back walk four frames. Then turn. Uh, then uh, forward walk by two frames. And back walk by two frames. You can also. Also, um, switch those walking thingies here as human. Doesn't the the order doesn't matter? Just the back walk is probably most convenient uh, to do first, since you already have the right angle. And uh, yeah, this is now already our position. And now we just need to get an angle. Only the the first byte of the angle matters. So we start at angle zero or angle one. It doesn't matter um, since the game doesn't. Look at the last uh, byte, and I messed up. Dang it! Ah, camera. So do some ESS left up until eight C something, like there. Yeah. So you will get AC A one or AC A zero, and now we make it night. Okay, and now um, the heap setup. Um, so this setup will probably be useful in all dungeons, or maybe like we have four different route ideas currently, and this is one of them. Um, in all dungeons, um, you would need a different heap setup where the wall is uh, broken, but we don't have that yet, so I'm just going to do the um, other one where the wall is not broken. Um, yeah, let's try those pots. Go in here. Got a bomb. Go in and out one more time. Um, yeah, break these. Then drop two bombs. And go in and out one more time. And now do the super slide without breaking the closest pot. That was almost too far. <laughs> okay, um, the SRM angle is one unit off of the one that we previously used. So for this, yeah, target this. Um, five years is left up here and we can adjust to five on the last digit. And then yes is right. Up to here. 
three three two five and now go into uh, hideout so uh, yeah I drop the pot and now very important if you go back in there uh, the game would crash that's because uh, with this light SRM we also write something into links actor because yeah um, yeah, this, it would crash. So the only way to unload the room, so we need to unload the room for the SRM to be successful in the end, because the destruct, uh, destru destroy function of a torch runs, and it also runs when we uh, just exit, and then the game does not crash. So we need to exit this way. So, um, let me see if this worked. So what should have happened in memory is this here. Um, last one, I think nine. Yeah, right here, this point I changed. This is what our, um, what our Y position and this here is the last, so, so the, the lower three bytes of Y position and this is the highest byte of uh, Z position. Okay, now we can hit this owl. I think I have not hit it in this, on this file. Yeah. Or you could also do index warp, but I mean, why would you set up index warp for this? Okay, now uh, the last digit of Z determines where we warp and I want to find something of which I know that it doesn't crash. I don't know all the values here. Uh, do I know something? I know nothing, <laughs> fuck. Probably most of them. Ah, there was one. Fuck. One that I knew. Let's try this, 6-2, this probably works. Since we always warp to entrance 0, it's actually most likely that it, that it doesn't crash. Since every uh, scene has entrance 0. Ooh, interesting. I've seen that um, transition before, but I did not know that it was possible to trigger that with um, this setup. That's pretty park. So yeah, I guess after this we enter a Great Bay Temple. This is such um, an anticlimactic entrance. <laughs> Okay, I guess that's it.